Alright, hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the Scorpio Cup community data, so gratefully uh, gathered by Ramen, Ryan, Sien, Juice, Clister, Zeus, Rice Tea, Warpluck, Matt, Karhumis, Johnny, and Valley. Uh, this data is quite important for me because I use it to basically determine some of my decisions because I just look at what people's what people uh, have in terms of cards uh, what people have in terms of horses and what are the most common trends in all of these cms then you can use them for the future right so yeah of course this is all community data so in the actuality of uma musume we always have to assume that hey we are more on the sweatier side rather than the normal human being side so thankfully we are maintaining a relatively similar number of people coming to play this little uh, submitting of data game so we can have some pretty nice data here to go and look at right over here we have the player spending as we can see here then most players even in the sweatier side of the server are going to be free to players uh, small spenders with a little bit of pack buying or maybe some of you are just major pack buyers maybe you buy a crazy amount of packs compared to the normal person over here but yeah as you can see this will be the three most common denominations of uma musume and any other gacha game really right the whales that you will be fighting are not so not so uh, big right so i think it's good that actually when you go into cms the regular champions meets right not the rooms you will basically be fighting most of these people over here so the playing field will be basically hey i'm fighting you on equal wealth grounds so let's see who has rerolled or hit a more insane horse and who will get lucky today right rather than oh i fought a godlike horse over here he's probably going to be winning right Okay, and over here we have the win rate by spending tier. In Uma Musume, because the cards are just so damn important, those who spend more will definitely be able to shit out better horses. Right, having fine motion is such a major difference because fine motion is the best wits card in our time. Right, later on in JP, the power creep level of the wit card will just depend on your position. Right, maybe you just want to get Daiwa Scarlet because you want to have a lot of frontrunner skills. Maybe you want to get another card because you want to get a lot of late surge skills. Stuff like that will become a little bit more prominent. So the Wits cards are not going to be so uh, big in impact because everyone will be able to get their own amount of cards. Basically right now we are in the early game of any Hoyovers game. Right, There's only Sile and there's not really other DPSs to go and look at. So it's similar to that where we basically only have to some black right now. We don't have a lot of variety of speed cards, no variety of wit cards, no variety in any of our other cards. Right? So later on there will be some very very awesome Hoyovers level OP characters every six months and then you go and pull those cards and then those cards will basically be the bedrock that you will build your whole deck around. Right, So yeah, this is the logic here for the spending by winning tier over here. Right, uh, Luck versus Grind, as you can see, the more you play, the more you're likely to be able to hit a very awesome run and then you have a very, very awesome boss. Right, but as you can see here, the win rate goes from about 50% to about 60%. Honestly, even at this win rate here, you will definitely go into A-Finals already because most people cannot even bother to go to this level over here. It's just too much effort to go and run 20 times a day. Right, very, very uh, painful for you to go and do. Right. For cards own, look at this, this is a very very valuable uh, information because one thing for certain, a lot of you don't have Pico Pegasus, a lot of you will be in the Perma Borrow slot, get the Sunblack, a lot of you will have it, maybe there will be a lot more in the entire Uma Musume community that will not have Kita Sunblack still, I think there were only about 50 or 60-ish people in my community that actually do not have Kita Sunblack yet, but Pico Pegasus, Rush Hour Power, Super Creek Time now was a little bit more because there was a banner and the whales were able to go and pull for it, but I think for the majority of the rest who were not rich enough to go and pull for for super quick they were not able to go and get her right now of course we have fine motion wit fine motion wit is just one of the most desired cards in the game and that's why she's probably going to be very very borrowed there's no banner yet but there will be one banner coming up later on that people will be hunting for right as you can see here fine motion is one of the most borrowed Biko pegasus is the second most borrowed smart falcon for the lazy front runner players i understand right because honestly there's a lot of things and a lot of rng in every single run so sometimes you just need to hit in three runs because you can't be bothered anymore just take the smart falcon call it a day Right, also, you can see here all the other niche cards that people are borrowing because they just have no choice, right? You might be wondering, hey, why are you borrowing Super Creek? Why are you borrowing Rush Hour? It's because sometimes they don't have enough cards, they don't have enough stamina, uh, sparks to hit the stamina, so they must go and take these kind of options over here. So there's really no choice for some of these people, right? You have to understand that all these people here all have different levels of decks, all have different levels of powers, right? So don't be telling people, hey, you should go for this amount of weight when actually their power and stamina already is good, so shit, right? It's really damn shit. So just don't tell them to go for weight because as much as you want to tell them to go for wit, they really can't go for wit, right? I've been here before, so wit is really a luxury stat for these people. Okay, moving on, we have round 1 and round 2 only now. For round 1, as we can see here, there's a lot of free people to go and beat up, so you'll be able to get a very, very nice win rate over here. Should be a very easy going into your FA uh, round 2, right? Very, very easy for you guys. As For this CM, 
It was the big three of Sayu Suzuka, Mao Zensky, Taiki Shato. But Oguri Cap and then double dominated strategies, uh, Saiyan Sky, Esmaru, Majur Dober, Nice Nature were some of the most picked options over here. Right, Dober is a paid unit and a gambler, so basically not a lot of you people will be pulling for Dober because Oguri Cap's coming up next, Christmas Oguri at least. Right, so understandable. Okay, for this one we had a Pace Maru, we had Front Marus, we had Pace Taikis, we had Front Taikis for all the different uh, reasonings, right? And then we had Sayan Suzuka into Runaway. As you can see here, while people do recommend you to go for the very, very niche stuff, right? Not, not many people will actually go for the niche stuff, right? Oh, you should go Front Taiki and then after that you'll be more likely in the front loaded lobby to get into your third and fourth positions. Not a lot of people actually will bother doing that, but most people will just go for the default options because it's the easiest option, right? So yeah, that is pretty much the logic here for all of this. I always assume that people will go for the easiest possible option to make their stuff so that they can go into a finals no problem right for the team compositions you can see here run away plus fun plus front run away plus fun plus pace and then pace and late and late so yeah these are the three big ones and they do include usually taiki suzukas or marus and skis inside of them right for round two the data always flattens every single time maybe it can go a little bit higher over here but it's generally around 10 11 and 12 positions over here 50 percent win rate is more than enough for you to get into the uh, a finals more than enough already even a 40 percenter even a 20 percenter can just get into a finals literally just win three in a row and you'll be able to go inside already so the bar to entry for the final rooms is very low and the people that you meet in the rooms is just a coin flip whether you get godlike enemies or you get no godlike enemies right so it's always viable for anyone to win right it's really very viable for anyone to win i even have data for that as well right as you can see here nice nature still used right i'm not saying that she's going to be very popular in my community because they know about speed debuffers but nice nature is the default hey i just want to make this horse into a debuffer and just call it a day kind of horse right grass wonder is also very popular and even in jp to this day if they can put grass wonder and make their life easier they would put grass wonder just because dominator is still the king of speed debuffs and grass wonder is hella easy to make one of the easiest horses to make for a speed debuffer so yeah this will be a very very common trend that you will see in every single medium no matter what they will always bring speed debuffers they will always bring stamina debuffers every single time every single freaking time right so yeah then after that we have the big trio over here because it's the meta horses and after that we have the generic horses over here that some people like to use right Seiyun, Maru Zensi, Sama, Dober because Dober's unit is very good when it's on herself and Oguri Cap very very common horse right Oguri Cap is just straight up a oh I don't know what to use for this CM Oguri Cap will basically solve a lot of your problems right after that, we have the cumulative data across all the days. This one's not so important for you guys, but it's good to see that we still retain quite a significant chunk of you guys over the initial period of time, which I think is very, very good for us. Right. And then over here, we have the win rates. It always drops to 50%, roughly around there. Right. The general first day is going to be very high win rate, and then the second day is going to be very, very terrible win rate. But after that, when you get to the finals, the finals are going to be very, very free or very, very hard, depending on what kind of lobby you get. Right. So yeah, for Runaway, for this CM, because Unrestrained and the Great Front Runner strategy was available for Suzuka, this was basically a very, very powerful uh, CM for her. But when there is no Unrestrained and only Angling and Scheming, Suzuka may not have enough resources in order to win. Right. As you can see from the pace, the late and the end, right, they have NSM, they sometimes have Spurt, they have Dober, they have Ryan, they have Maru, they have Taiki, they have Shino Flower. Right. They usually have a lot of different ways to win. So the Runaway or the Front Runner generally will only have one thing, Angling and Scheming and their spot struggles so if they cannot do that they are usually not able to win so that's why Suzuka with the unrestrained for some tracks actually helps her a lot to get that first place and get that victory for you but when there's no unrestrained it's not really very common to see your Suzuka win right so yeah that's the power of the runaway when the unrestrained is available for you later on there will be a swim Suzuka which is a lot more powerful than the regular Suzuka in terms of winning more consistently right so you can go and try and use that one to go and win also right after that, for finals data over here, we have the 1, 2, and 3. Suzuka, Marzenski, and then Taiki Shuttle. But, psych! It is Christmas Oguri Cap because in my community, everyone pulled for the Cinderella Grey and immediately sh**ed out one good one and then they were able to get their win. I got second place because chat told me to go and buy stamina spare. I blame chat for all of that, not my problem. Alright, anyway. Oji Maru, Sayan Suzuka, Xmas Oguri Cap. Boom. Suddenly, Taiki Shuttle totally disappeared. Unlucky. Actually, she's just a little bit below here, so it's fine. Right, so basically, these three were the big horses of the day and Xmas Oguri, people love her a lot, right? Because she's Oguri Cap and she's from Cinderella Grey and the power of anime means that people would just go and pull because they saw her in the anime and she looked really good. Right? 
right? That's why there's so many KO fans. That's why there's Manhattan Cafe fans. That's why there's the Marmo Cross fans, right? So yeah, there's a lot of different horse fans depending on what show you watch. Later on, when they make TM Opera O into an actual arc of her own, she's going to be able to pop off really, really well and then people will go and pull for her 100%. Right, that's basically how this entire game works. They will reset enemy and then you're like, oh my god, my goat is so awesome. And then you pull for your goat and you only play your goat. Right, that's why Oguri Cap is so good. Also. It helps that Oguri Cap is also a very versatile horse and also a very, very easy horse to go and make. Right, some of you will say, no, this horse is not very easy. But no, it is an easy horse. You must consider that. Right, it's just a very easy to hit the speed, very easy to hit the stamina. Then it's actually just power and weight that's the problem now. So it just depends on your deck already to go and make it the horse. And you can make her as easy as possible, or as hard as possible, to make her min max as possible, or as basic as possible. Because even the basic Doguri will be able to beat a lot of people already. Right, it's just a very, very good horse. Okay, moving on to the OCR data over here. You can see here that most people will be able to buy about 12 skills. The more the better, of course. The more the better, of course. But sometimes you just can't get a lot. But even with eight skills, you still be you still are able to win right as long as you have the important skills you can always be able to win right for this one i want to showcase some very important stats again uh, because this is the second time we showcase these stats first off for wit as you can see the variance is giga high because wit is a luxury stat it is not a it is a very good stat it's a very very good stat it gives you a lot of good stuff but sometimes the poor cannot afford to get it Right, the poor really cannot afford to get it. I've been here before. Anyone that yells at anyone that says, Oh, you should have gotten this amount of weight, you're cooked. Shut the up, man. Because literally, I've been here before and I've won with 300, 400 with horses already. Right, as much as people want to keep pushing for these 600 plus with horses, some people just cannot hit the stat lines of these things over here. Right, the speed, the stamina, the power, I'm already getting cooked with cows. Why do people keep telling me to get high weight? Because it's a good stat, but it's also a luxury stat to me because I've been here before and even a weight of 300s, 400s, 500s will be more than capable of winning. Of course, the median line will be getting a lot of weight over here to have a higher chance of victory. But still, you don't want to go too low, you don't want to go too high. Because if you go too high, then you will sacrifice these stats over here to make your life miserable. Power is always going to be very important. Stamina is going to be core. Speed is going to be core. You need these three stats over here. Guts, who cares about guts? Guts can just be 300, 400 and you'll be roughly okay already. Right? Wit is going to be very, very uh, volatile. You can either get a lot of it because your deck is very good or you'll have a good spark for it. But if you are very, very poor, you don't have a lot of stuff, even a 300, 400 with horse will be more than capable of winning. Right, just letting you know. Because this game, as long as you hit and the guy doesn't hit, you basically win the game. Right, so yeah. Just take note of that. Of course, I'm not saying that you shouldn't go for this. You shouldn't go for this kind of weight over here. But going for this one, I will say it's still okay, really. Because some people really cannot afford to go for this one over here. I right, really, really can't afford to. Okay, after that, we have the win rate by the running strategy. Late Surger will be the lowest one. That's because it's mostly debuffers. So don't so don't care about that one. Right, but end closer, front runner, pace chaser, run away. The end closer one was very, very surprising. But I'm guessing they are playing some sort of a gambling team comp with this end closer strategy over here. And then we have the distribution of the winning times over here. Right, and then for this one, I want to show you guys that literally some random can literally win. Right, this is a sacrifice Suzuka with 800 speed, 800 stamina, 900 power, and 700 wit. The lobby that this guy fought was three runaway Suzukas. He got spot struggled and rushed, but he lived because his speed was not maxed and he had a goal recovery inside of him. So because of that one miraculous thing that happened to him and the fact that his speed is not maxed, he was able to live the entire run and he actually won with this horse. It was quite ridiculous. This is one of the lowest speed wins we've ever seen in our community so far. Right, A very very ridiculous play here by Falks here where he straight up got a 3 runaway Suzuka lobby and because all of them spot struggle and rush, his without the max speed was able to run all the way to the end, unrestrained angling and win. So that is something that is quite ridiculous to see. For this science to come over here, I actually think that it might not even have unrestrained. It was literally just spot struggle plus rush boosting her lead to a ridiculous level. I don't remember the unrestrained already. Right, so yeah, this is a very, very funky horse that was able to win. Umar Musume is really an RNG game. Right, for stream over here, we have a funny one where he's basically all very, very close together. We have front and then nose and then neck and then nose. Literally, it's just uh, everyone is super close to each other. It's just the best photo finish you've ever seen. Right. And then Bite Life Savings actually did the Guts build. Now for the Guts build, I always tell people, as long as you can get this, this, and this to a good level, you will win no matter what. So even if you are using a Guts build like this, because he hit this speed and this power and this wit, awesome, very, very good. You can definitely win with this horse already, right? The Guts is not that relevant compared to getting this, this, and this. So whether you use the Guts deck, whether you use a regular deck, as long as you get this, 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 and a good amount of stamina to this level, you will be able to win already, right? Guts is good for scoring also because it raises a lot of stat lines to 
a very high level. The fact that he was able to get 800 wit with these two cards over here is a testament to how either lucky he is or how good his sparks are. So I do not know which one is the case here. Right, but this is a very, very awesome deck over here that he was able to hit all of these very, very core cool stat lines over here. You can definitely do it. Just whether or not you are willing to go and grind for the sparks and for the bonuses to go and do it. Right, for example, Suzuka here has a speed bonus inside of her, so it's a lot easier to max the speed, but the power is going to be a hell of a lot of problem for Suzuka in order to try and max. Right, so yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for this Suzuka over here. Right, very, very good stuff from her. After that, for the award section here, we have basically the F2 peers that win. Because honestly, Uma Musume is an Oshi game. As long as you know what you're doing, as long as you hit good stat lines, you'll be able to win no matter what the meta is. Alright, 1200 speed, 800 power, 700 wit. This horse, not a meta horse, right? Not Maru, not Suzuka, not Oguri, not any of these other top fours, but was able to win on the Tokyo 2000. This was not carried by another person. This was carried by the horse itself. This horse won. It's like how in the previous CM, uh, Haru Urara won. Right, literally as long as you know what you're doing, you can make your Oshi win, they will just not win a lot, but they can win every now and then. And that's the beauty of Uma Musume, allowing your weird horses to go and win as long as you have the power, the money and the time to go and do it. Right, after that we have Shad Prince over here with a not max speed, air groove, good power and great wit horse and was able to get a win for this uh, CM over here. Very, very nice by this one. Air Groove is a, not a very common horse to be able to win, but I know a lot of people really like Air Groove for some reason, and I still do not know why. Right, after that, we have Mami Super Creek, another very popular horse because Mami, yeah. Right, after that, not max speed, power and wit are pretty decent. We're still able to win. Right, don't know what happened in the lobby. Right, maybe the enemy never activated their skills. Maybe you hit everything perfectly. Maybe you hit NSM perfectly, and then you just diff everyone by just running it down. Right, you didn't white swing, you didn't get blocked, someone else got blocked. There's a million factors in Uma Musume. So it's not a very easy game to go and give you a one size fits all answer. Right, a lot of different things can happen. Like the Suzuka, how the hell do you have three front runner into sports struggle into rush into win? Right, that's a very ridiculous, like one in a million kind of a thing that you've ever seen in your life. Right, but Uma Musume is just like that. It allows for this kind of crazy RNG for you to go and win like that. Right, Super Lucky 7 here by Prey. If you notice, right, the Matikane players are either crazy or Prey. They are just that kind of people, right? Anyway, 1,179 1, speed with a crazy amount of power with a great amount of it. I look at this stat line over here and I'm like, damn, that's a very strong gambler. Right, you just put that and then you put Dober, put Ryan or something like that and then try to win from that. Right, although in this case, I think this CM was not good for Dober. So it probably was like a Maruzenski activation or something like that. Who knows? Right, so yeah, this is pretty much the Matikani Fuku strategy over here. The two lucky people of Prey and Crazy managed to get their Matikanis to win. Very, very awesome stuff. Right, over here we have the quiz by Karhumis. Feel free to go and peruse this one at your own uh, time. I'm not going to bother with this one over here, but it is very, very good for you to basically look at some weird R questions and whatnot. And then you can go to the website over here. The website has even more details for you. You can go to the Patreon for Nas Haas to get more Discord stickers. You can go to the Discord for Mumu Cows and just go and talk to people and whatnot. If you have more questions about this, feel free to go to my Twitch or YouTube live streams or so, or you can go through the Kofi and I'll try to answer your questions as best as I can. Right, so yeah, this is a very, very good amount of data over here that the most important one that I want to just show people is just this over here to show that Uma Musume is not really a whale-focused game. It's going to always be mostly around the free-to-players and whatnot over here. So if you see people super min-maxing to a crazy, crazy point, don't worry about it. A lot of people won't bother with that. Right, if we expand this a hundred times, most of the people are casuals. They don't care about this kind of stuff over here. So basically, you will be able to just win, right? You'll be able to have a competitive advantage no matter what because most people are not super, super whale. Maybe if your community is very small, then you'll be just a bunch of giga whales fighting each other with S plus horses, but not really, right? In our global community, we are quite chill. So I think that most of the time we are just playing for Oshi, we're just playing for chill times, we're just playing to get the CM over with rather than min maxing to that ridiculous level, right? But if you want to do it, no problem also. You'll be able to get very good, very good win rate, right? That's why there's like different uh, schools of thought for Uma Musume. One is just get the bare minimum, get your distance S, get your important recoveries, get your important skills for acceleration, and then after that, boom, throw the horse in, bang. Congratulations, you will be able to win with the horse 100%, right? It's just whether your lobby is lucky or not, right? Or you can do very, very min-max strats and do a runaway rocket launcher just to go and boost your win rate for that specific horse because you like Daiwa Scarlet, you like Expense of Guri, you like the Pace Chaser Seiyun Sky because I know one guy in my community that loves making Pace Chaser Seiyun Sky and he just rocket launches every single time for victory, right? So do whatever you want that makes you happy in Uma Musume. It's a very flexible game and allows for a lot of new ones and a lot of min-maxing potential which is very very good about it right so yeah that's pretty much all i have to say about this data over here thanks guys for watching i shall see you guys next time bye bye